Happy Wednesday, friends. You made it to the middle of the week. Can you believe it? I don't know how your Wednesday's going. I hope it's going well. I personally, uh, Wednesday's a good day for me. And, and part of it, there's a lot to do on Wednesday because here at our church, we have a midweek study and we meet on Wednesday nights. We're going through the Old Testament of the scriptures. And, and I love it. I look forward to it. I look forward to to meeting with God's people, worshiping, and then getting into the Word, praying together. And I feel like it carries me through the rest of the week. I hope you go to a midweek study. You know, a friend of mine said recently, man, I, I don't really know any churches that are having midweek. They don't, people don't do that anymore. I'm like, why? Why wouldn't you do that? You know, in some places, it's just so easy to to go to church online. We kind of got used, some people got used to that uh, a few years ago, and some people are still doing that. Listen, hey, it's great to watch devotions. It's great to be able to use various materials in order to grow, but listen, you need to be in church. You need to be with God's people. You need to be connected to the local body of believers. Find a church that teaches the Bible and get planted there and begin to grow. They're out there. There's guys that are teaching the word. There are good ministers. And here in our text today, Paul tells Timothy, what makes a good minister? We touched on it on Monday, but I want to revisit it once more. Verse 6, 1 Timothy 4, 6. If, here, here's how you know if you're a good minister or if you have a good minister. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you'll be a good minister. That is sound doctrine. If you are teaching the people faithfully the word of God, you know what? You're a good minister. If you're not teaching them faithfully the word of God, you're a bad minister because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. I, I realize, I read this, I'm like, okay, I want to be a good minister. You'll be nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you've carefully followed. As a good minister, you're not just teaching people sound doctrine, but listen, you're also following sound doctrine personally. It's one thing to say things that the Bible says, and be able to point to chapter and verse and tell other people what they should be doing. But it's also to be a reality in my own life. I can't tell people to do something that I'm not doing myself. I don't just exhort people, hey, follow the Lord. If I'm not following the Lord, I'm not going to be an effective or good minister. I actually be a hypocrite, and I don't want to be that. And neither do you. And so Paul tells him, you're going to be a good minister if you do these things. What else makes a good minister? Uh, verse 7, but reject profane and old wives' fables, and exercise yourself toward godliness. You know what makes a good minister? Not only teaching sound doctrine, but rejecting false doctrine. I don't need to engage in that. I'm not going to teach that. That's false. I don't need to, to, to give place to profane and wives' fables. It's pointless. There's nothing to it. it there's nothing solid about it. It doesn't build anybody up. Why am I going to waste my time talking about that? Too many pulpits today, I think, in some places, perhaps, are just getting into old wives' fables. Like, t tell the people what God's Word says. That's what we need to hear. Avoid these other things. And if we'll do that, then the Bible says we're considered good ministers. And also, exercising yourself toward godliness. Do you exercise? Oh, maybe physically. You have a, a regiment. Do you have a workout? Do you have a gym that you go to? Do you spend this time? Do you walk? Do you count your steps? What, what do you do? A lot of people are into that, and it's good. You should take care of the physical body that you have. It's a temple from the Lord. And I think it's important for us to um, do our best to maintain what God's given us so that we can be used to our full potential and capacity. For me, I, I enjoy doing those kinds of things, physical activity. And it's important to get on to do something. Do something. Well, I don't like to. Well, find something that you like and do it. Exercise yourself physically, but more importantly, exercise yourself toward godliness. That's what Timothy was doing exercising himself toward godliness. How do you do that? Man, you get your reps in. One, two, no, I'm kidding. But you read the scriptures. You read the Bible. You're in prayer. You're exercising yourself. You're exercising your faith. You're taking steps. You're, you're walking with God. This is how you exercise yourself in godliness. But then he adds to Timothy, verse 8, for bodily exercise, ah, it profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having the promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. Hey, listen, it's great that you uh, do your Pilates or your whatever it is that you're into, your class or um, your HIIT training or your CrossFit, um, you name it. You're a runner. You, you're on a Peloton. I'm, have I named everything you're doing? Um, whatever you're doing, it's great. It's good that you eat clean. That's, I think that's important. But listen, 
bodily exercise, it profits a little. And, and the little that it profits is beneficial. It really is. But something even more important, again, he emphasizes it, godliness is profitable for all things. Pursuing the Lord, walking with, that affects every area of my life. And especially when you have the promise of a life that now is. You know, you find life in Christ, but there's also a life to come in the future with Christ for all of eternity. In verse 9, Paul says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end, we both labor and we suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Paul tells Timothy, I'm going to tell you something that's a faithful and worthy saying. And he tells them, um, we are laboring. That is, we are working. We are straining in this effort of ministry. And because we are laboring for the truth and working in this way, we also um, suffer. We, we suffer reproach. We, we're not the most popular people in a city. In fact, not everybody likes us because of the things that we teach. Not everybody wants to be around us. Not everybody, some people are canceling us. They don't like what we're doing. But that didn't stop Paul. He said, we are willing to suffer reproach. Why? Why is he suffering reproach? Because we trust in God. That's why. Have you ever suffered anything for the cause of Christ? Have you ever um, been on the receiving end of, of some kind of, uh, you know, things said about you that were false just simply because you were a Christian? Are, have you undergone any persecution? Has anybody ever uh, slandered you because of your faith in Christ? It happens. And, and the more you live for Jesus, the, perhaps the more you're going to experience that. You know, we, we don't want to suffer anything. We don't want people to not like us. And I think I understand that. I don't want people to hate me. But they hated Jesus, the most gracious, most merciful, kind individual of all times. They murdered. They put him on a cross. And yet, because we trust in God, because we identify with God, sometimes we suffer too. Some trials, some difficulty, some, some neglect, or we are not welcomed among people. But, but Paul says here, listen, we trust in the living God, and this God that we serve, he is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Paul said, these things command and teach. Timothy, you got a job to do. If you want to be a good minister... It's extremely important that you teach sound doctrine, that you reject false doctrine, that you live by the doctrine that you teach, that you exercise yourself toward godliness. And if you will do these things, even if you suffer reproach for trusting in God, God's going to bless the work of your hands. And friends, listen, he's going to bless you too. Look forward to seeing you on Friday.